Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And today we're going to continue our talk on Profile Manager and more specifically this week we're going to talk about how to manage devices using Profile Manager. Now we talked about how to enroll a device into Profile Manager but what we haven't covered yet is how do you now manage those devices and what does that look like. And so in one of our earlier screencasts we talked about how to do this for users and groups. For devices it's very similar. Uh, there's only a couple little di uh, differences. Uh, you'll notice that uh, on the left hand side here where there's library we have devices and device groups. And those two categories are there just like we had users and groups for the users. Now, to create groups for users, you'll notice that we had to do that. Uh, you notice there's only a refresh button here. That's because we created uh, groups for users here in our groups section. Uh, back here in the server application. Okay, Now, when you come to devices, uh, however, you create groups uh, within the category that's set here and you do it within this particular system. And I'm going to show you how to set up those groups in a minute because just like it was a good idea to manage users through using group profiles, it's also a great way to manage devices by using uh, device group profiles. But uh, let me just give you a tour of this for a minute here. You'll see that uh, I've got all the different devices in the house and so let me just uh, pull up uh, one of my son's uh, iPods here, for instance. And so you'll see we've got the profile just like we had on, uh, on the uh, individual users, right? When we did the users and looked at the profiles, there are device profiles here. I'm going to show you what that uh, looks like here. Let's just, let's just click edit so you can see what it looks like. Uh, what it'll do is bring up this, uh, again, settings for this particular device. And you'll notice all this stuff looks pretty close to the same right? I mean there's not a lot of change to it. Uh, the only changes we see is there's a there's a new directory area here, there's a login window area here, there's software update, energy saver, and then there's specific again parental controls for the device but other than that those are the new things. Everything else happens just about exactly the same way in terms of configuring it. So what's nice is that you don't have to relearn all these different configuration things. You can do them uh, with devices or users and they're pretty much the same. So that's what the profile is here. You'll notice we got an activity section. Like I said, just like with the users, you have activities where we pushed information or updates to this particular device or any devices you've got, and it shows when the updates were pushed, whether they were successful or not, and what type of information was pushed out. And you can say you can see it'll tell you when it fails as well. Maybe the uh, device wasn't on long enough or something happened there. Uh, but you'll notice on the same date it, it did succeed later on. So you know everything's good. And so you can check to see whether your push settings got taken care of or not. Uh, there's an about section for the device. Again, gives you the serial number, the software version, the capacity, who the user is. Uh, all this detailed stuff that we talked about uh, when I talked about the device enrollment, uh, all that stuff is right here. It makes it for uh, kind of a neat way to check it. And then of course we've got the apps which again we're not uh, we're not distributing those kinds of things as a home user. So you can see we've got all these different devices here. Now we can uh, do a couple of things. Let's say you want to add a device but you just haven't uh, added it yet so you want to have a placeholder for it. If you come down here and you, you push this plus button you can import a placeholder or add one. So if I just click add placeholder here for a minute, what happens is you can put in the name of whatever it is you want to have the placeholder for, for. So let's just say, you know, Joe's iPod, right? And you need to put in then either a serial number, the UDID, uh, the IMEI or that, and those are just identifiers uh, that you would put in. Now I don't have one that I can add just to kind of show you, uh, but basically what it would do then is it would add a space just like these with, a, with kind of a blank area here because it didn't know exactly what device it was. But when that device came online and added the profiles, it would just fill it in where you already had it because it would match the serial numbers up against each other and instead of adding two devices it would just add it in there. So if you want to kind of do your profile settings ahead of time before the devices come online, that's how you would do that. You would add the device ahead of time with a placeholder and then put in all of the different settings and things you want and then, then that when that person joins everything will be pushed to their device through those profiles. So it gives kind of a nice convenient way of setting it up ahead of time as opposed to doing it after the device is already enrolled and shows up here. Now, just like I said it's good to, to manage users through groups, the same thing is true through devices. And so we have these device groups here. And again, there's no place to set these up in the server application, so you can just add a group by pressing the plus button down here. And you'll notice now it says a device group. You can name it whatever you want, and then you start adding members to it. Now let me delete this. So if you want to get rid of a, of a group, same way, instead of putting plus, you hit the minus. It asks if you want to do it. Are you sure? And you say yes, it's gone. And so now it's back to this.
And so what I did is I just added uh, a few groups. I added a group of desktop uh, Macs, of iOS devices generally, and then the kids' iOS devices. All right, so that way I can uh, see all my iOS devices, I can see all my kids' iOS devices, and my desktop Macs. And so once you do that, these profiles are the same almost as looking at uh, different user groups, right? So I've got what are the members of my desktop Macs? Well, right now I just have one. All right, so I only have uh, I have this one particular one involved. If I want to add another one, I just come down here to the plus button, and I say add a device. All right, so I want to add a device to this, and so I'm going to add uh, the laptop that I added at the beginning of our series here. I'm going to add that particular laptop now to this group, and I'm just going to click done, and you'll notice that now that new laptop shows up in this group, and so I've got two members now in this particular group. Now I've got to remember to save it, right? If I don't click the save button, then nothing changes. Now that I click save, you'll notice there's two members over here now. Uh, activity that happened for these Macs. If I push things out to them, the activity would be there. Uh, about, right? Any groups that there. In. So it's got a very similar setup across all of these different device groups. Now, again, if you're managing kids, good idea to create maybe a kids group list here. And then that way you can uh, you can manage that when the profiles right here on the devices. Uh, again, you can see the members, right? Okay, I've got all the kids uh, iPods in here so I can manage them. And then here's some of the activity that I pushed to all three of these devices. All right, so two succeeded and one had a problem. So I can check that out. I happen to know the one that had a problem was because my son hasn't never turned on his iPod because he had lost it. Uh, and we recently found it. So now he'll be able to update that when he turns it on. Uh, so let's take a look at the profile just so you can see how similar it is, uh, like I said before, to the other profiles we've done. All of these things I covered in the previous screencast, and so if you want to look at what each of these areas look like, you can do that. So all I'm going to do now is cover the new ones. And so you'll see there's a new directory one here for Mac OS X devices. And if I click Configure, all that allows me to do is if you had, uh, if you're on a business network and you've got another directory that you need your Mac computers to correct to, because the directory isn't, you know, uh, on the particular server that you've got right there, you put in all of this information with the client ID and everything, and then that way that is already configured when your user logs in. You can push those settings to your user. So that's what that's for. Again, for a home user, you're not really going to use that. Uh, you also have login window. And so this is kind of neat. You can configure what shows on the login window. So you can have a, uh, you know, a name, a version, build, serial number, and you can put a message up there that shows on the login window. You know, like, hey, remember you're not, you know, to the kids, remember you're not supposed to be using this before 6 p.m. You know, whatever you want to put on there. But you can put a message that shows up. Uh, you can also do the style. You can have name and password text fields if you want. Or you can say, list the users uh, able to use these computers and show local users, mobile accounts, show network users, uh, computer administrators, show other. Uh, you can even say, yeah, I want to show a shutdown button or not. And so these things will show up on the particular login window um, when you go to log into the, to your uh, computers uh, or uh, you know when if, if it's Mac devices. Uh, you also have options over here. You can show password hint uh, you know when needed and available. Enable automatic login, console, enable fast user switching or not. And you can see all of these different controls here are things that we typically see in system preferences. And let me just show you uh, some of that stuff real quick so you can see that in system preferences we have most of these different things when we talk about login. So when you go to uh, you know users and groups in your system preferences area here uh, and you go to login items you have those here or you go to uh, this login options area uh, you'll notice that some of these things are already there. Fast user switching, uh, you know, what buttons to show on the login number, you know, whether you're going to have automatic login or not. You're basically configuring these things to configure this area in your system preferences on the different Macs that you're configuring. So it's a great way to have those things uh, set up. You can also set access, right? Allow users and groups that can log into this computer and say only these can and these people can't log into this particular computer. And again, local only users or local, you know, local only users can use the work group settings. You can go and fine tune these different things for access. And then you can even set up different scripts that you want to execute, right? Whether you want uh, this particular login hook one to execute or not. Uh, you can upload your own scripts if you've got particular ones you want to have uploaded uh, when people log in. Again, you won't need that as a home user, but just know that it's there. And so you have various uh, options of things that you can do.
Uh, you also have login items, and I think I showed you this on the last thing on the different login items that come up. Same thing here for computers, right? The different mounts I want to have or the items I want to load. Uh, software update is also included in here where you can configure that. And you can say, hey, I want, I want a software update to come from a certain URL. And as we'll see in, in some of the advanced setup when I do that tutorial, you can actually have software update come from your server, where your server downloads the updates, and then those updates get pushed to all your devices. So you don't have to wait for each um, computer to download those particular updates. You can also set up your printers in here for your Mac uh, OS devices. So you can specify the printers you want to add, what your default printer is, uh, whether they can modify the printer list or not. Uh, again, kind of neat that you can have your printers already set up and ready to go when they log into their computer. Uh, and then the other new one on this list that wasn't in the previous screencast is Energy Saver. And so you can say how long to put the computer to sleep, uh, when you want to put the display to sleep, the wake options, uh, all of those kinds of things. Uh, you've also got it on your portable devices, right? You know, how long do you want it to sleep for the portable, wake options, all those kinds of things, the power adapter, uh, how you're going to set those things up. Uh, it's really a neat kind of a deal. And then you can also schedule, right? You can schedule the startup of the computer or the sleep of the computer. And again, these are all things that you normally would see in your system preferences. And this is literally just making all of the settings for the energy saver panel that's right here in system preferences. You're making all of those settings in your device management and pushing them out and those changes will take place here. So again, this is a very powerful way to manage your system. And so when you're done, you just click OK, and then you save, and then those things get pushed. So I'm just going to click Cancel because I want to leave those things alone for right now. But that gives you a tour of how to do that. And so you can do that by device groups, or you can even do it down to the devices that you've got and make those settings happen. And I want you to notice when you do that, then these active tasks and activity things in the sidebar show up. And it shows here that I that this particular update of the kids' iOS devices, here's the three devices that I pushed to, two succeeded, one it's still sending because we couldn't find this particular iPod. And so that's why that's there. And then we had pu uh, push settings for Jacob's iPod that we did later that showed up here. So again, this gives you the active tasks that are going on, and then you get a list of your completed tasks. And these are all of the different push notifications and things that have happened by machine uh, or by user mapped out here for you to take a look at. And so it gives you really a complete management system for you to manage all your devices and all of your users. And so Profile Manager is a really uh, a great tool. Uh, and then finally up here, you can always you know, go to your devices for this particular user, to a device profile, download a trust profile, help, or log out. And uh, so again, this is a web uh, application that you can access from anywhere. All right, well, that's all I have for today. That's all I have on the on Profile Manager. Hopefully that gives you a, a nice overview uh, this week on how to manage devices. Again, Profile Manager is one of the gems of Lion Server and one of the cool things that gives uh, enterprise-level control to us as home users that we can use in our home environment. And so hopefully you've learned a lot on how to set up those devices uh, this week in our tutorial. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.